Hey there guys, we are going to go from what we've done in photosynthesis into its complement, which is cellular respiration. So we're going to start there. We need to first go ahead and get our essential question written down. So in your notes, go ahead right now and type out the essential question. And that question is, what is the role of the mitochondria, which you should remember from our unit on cells, that's a... Um, energy powerhouse right of the cell what is the role of the mitochondria in the breakdown of glucose to create energy for cell use and releasing carbon dioxide so now might be a good time to pause the video and type out this essential question all right so going into cellular respiration we've got a couple of things that we need to talk about um, pretty much anything that you see in this video you should probably type out um, it's all pretty important. So um, cellular respiration, that's the process of breaking down food molecules to release energy. So we did talk about quite a bit at the beginning of the school year about macromolecules and energy and how your body uses different macromolecules for different things, right? So what we're going to do now is take a look at what we actually do with the energy macromolecule that we use mostly for energy and how that actually gets energy to our cells. Okay, so we're going to break down those food molecules um, and glucose is our main source of energy for our body. We learned that again in macromolecules and we did marathon runner, right? Carbohydrates, sugars, and specifically glucose is broken down, right, by your body to make ATP, which is the actual molecule that your cells can use for energy. Remember, glucose is really, really big, right? It's a big molecule and it can get into your cell. However, once it's there, it needs to be broken down into smaller pieces so that your body can then use it to create ATP. Okay, and then respiration occurs in the organelle called the mitochondria, right? So that's this um, bean-shaped organelle over here that has these folds inside of it, membrane folds inside of it. Um, and so that is the organelle that is where we have the site of um, respiration and then somewhat out in the cytoplasm, okay? We got a little bit of cytoplasmic um, interaction there, okay? So the essentials that we need for cellular respiration, okay? We need oxygen, right? And where do we get it? Well, we just finished with um, photosynthesis. So when we breathe in, right, we get that oxygen from the air that we breathe. And that can come from, right, those photosynthetic autotrophs that we talked about in photosynthesis, right? That byproduct of photosynthesis is the oxygen. So we get that from plants. Glucose, plants make it, right? We know from photosynthesis that plants make glucose or sugar, right, for themselves. They make their own food. They make their own glucose. And then we eat that plant or we eat an uh, animal that eats a plant and then we get the glucose from them because, again, we can't make our own glucose. So we have to eat that from another source. We have digestion is a big part of cellular respiration. We take in that, um, let's say you eat pasta for dinner, right? You eat that uh, carbohydrate, rich meal and then you break down through digestion that carbohydrate into the simple building blocks right into the simple sugars into the um, glucose monomers right so that it can move right into the cell because if your food can't go from pasta into your cell unfortunately for you and for yourselves they can't eat pasta right they can't utilize that large amount of um macromolecule chains, right? So we have to break it down into its smaller pieces. So we have to cut them into individual glucoses that can then get into the cell from there. Once you get that glucose into the cell, there's a process that have, has it enter the mitochondria, and then it converts that glucose eventually through the process of respiration. You're going to get out, right, carbon dioxide and ATP. So you're going to produce that CO2 and energy. And it makes a lot of sense because when you breathe in, you need oxygen for respiration, right? So you breathe in and then you breathe out. And when you breathe out, you are getting rid of that CO2. That's a product of cellular respiration. And you also create ATP. And that CO2 then goes and gets used in photosynthesis where it will then make oxygen and the whole thing cycles through. All right. 
So this here is the equation. Now would be a really good time. Go ahead and pause and go ahead and look for the equation for cellular respiration. You can either um, search it up in the Google search or you can just take a snippet shot, screenshot snippet shot of this right now would be a really good idea. So go ahead and pause and get the um, equation for cellular respiration and insert it to your notes now. All right, there are three stages of cellular respiration. We have glycolysis first, okay? So glycolysis is the first step of cellular respiration. We'll talk about the details of each step here in a minute. So go ahead and just get down what the steps are. So step one, glycolysis. After you go through glycolysis, if you have oxygen available, so if let's say you're just taking your notes, you're sitting at your computer, your body is not under any kind of physical taxing situation, you have lots of oxygen available, you're able to breathe and there's plenty of oxygen, then step two from there would be the Krebs cycle. Okay, if you do not have oxygen present, for example, let's say you're running a 400 meter sprint, so one lap around a track at a dead sprint, you're trying to go as fast as you can, or if you were an animal and you're trying to escape from something, fight or flight, and you're sprinting, right, and you're going just dead sprint, all out breathless for a decent amount of time, if that were the case, then you would go to fermentation. And we'll talk about both of those here in a few minutes. Okay, so again, step two, if after glycolysis, you have lots of oxygen available like right now. So right now, as you're sitting taking your notes, you have plenty of oxygen available. Right now, you are going through the process of cellular respiration, right? You're doing glycolysis. You have lots of oxygen. You are going to go to the Krebs cycle. And then at the end, the third step is, no matter what, the electron transport chain, also called the ETC. Okay, so those are the three stages of cellular respiration. And this happens in all cells, no matter what, right? So you need this in big capital letters. Okay, cellular respiration happens in all cells. All right, so we're going to go um, step by step now. So it would be a really good idea to title it or give yourself a subtitle, step one, cellular respiration is glycolysis, which is a breakdown of glucose. Okay, so in step one, this is where we get the cytoplasm, the site of the cytoplasm um, in cellular respiration. So glycolysis, it happens in the cytoplasm. You want to make sure you know that. And it's an enzyme-assisted process that breaks down glucose. Okay, so this is a fancy sentence, an enzyme-assisted anaerobic process that breaks down glucose to pyruvate. Basically what that means is in the cytoplasm, right, you have an enzyme that takes your glucose molecule and it's anaerobic, meaning not requiring oxygen. So anaerobic means no oxygen, N or A, right, aerobic, anaerobic, anaerobic, no oxygen, okay. Um, it happens in the cytoplasm, you get your glucose molecule, and an enzyme comes and cuts it into two pyruvate molecules. Okay, so your glucose is six carbons, and then the enzyme comes out in the cytoplasm and cuts that into two three-carbon pyruvate molecules. So you have a six-carbon um, glucose molecule that's ready to help you do respiration, and it gets cut into two three-carbon pyruvate molecules. Again, it needs no oxygen. We don't need oxygen for this yet, okay? And in glycolysis, you get a production of two ATP. So at the start of cellular respiration, you take that glucose molecule, you cut it, right? You cut the bonds, you break the bonds. And once you break the bond to make two pyruvate molecules, so six carbon big molecule, cut it in half, two pyruvate molecules, you get two ATP out of that process, okay? So glycolysis, again, is going to produce two ATP. And it also is going to produce some CO2. Okay, so here are your products, right, of already of cellular respiration. You're getting two ATP and you're getting some CO2 out of glycolysis. So that's step one. After step one, then your pyruvate goes into the mitochondria. So this, remember, again, glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm. You are not in the mitochondria yet. Once you cut up that big glucose molecule into those two separate Pyruvate molecules, they are small enough now to go into the mitochondria. And that will, and again, one more reminder, this does not require oxygen. It says it a bunch of times, so I'm pretty sure that you might want to know that for your exam, okay? All 
All right, step two or stage two, okay, step two is fermentation. This is if there isn't oxygen present. So let's say you went out and you needed to, for PE or whatever, you needed to run a 400 meter dash, okay? So you get warmed up, you're ready to go, you get on the line, the whistle blows, and you're a dead sprint for a full lap, right? So that would be an anaerobic situation where you are basically working really hard without oxygen, okay? So this is where stage two of fermentation would be. So you go through glycolysis, and then you have no oxygen available. Your body goes through the fermentation pathway, okay? Then there are two types of fermentation. There's alcoholic fermentation, which um, we don't really go into as much for us because we're looking at, like, more human biology. And then there's lactic acid fermentation, which is what we do when we don't have oxygen available. So that would be like when you get sore muscles after a workout or after sprinting hard or whatever, when you are working really, really hard and your body is not accessing oxygen during that work time, then you're going through the lactic acid fermentation pathway. And when you do that, it creates lactic acid, which causes you to get sore. So if you've ever felt sore from a workout, that's because your body didn't have oxygen available for you right? And you went through the lactic acid fermentation pathway to create energy so that you could keep working. Okay. This is a picture of kind of a breakdown of cellular respiration in general. So if you want to go ahead right now, I would pause and go ahead and take a screenshot or a snippet or go and search for an overview um, picture of um, cellular respiration. So here we have your glucose out in the cytoplasm. You go through step one of glycolysis. Remember, it cuts this glucose from a six carbon sugar into two pyruvate molecules, and out of it, you do get two ATP, and you also get um, some CO2, right? Okay, so, and then we'll go through the rest of this here in a minute. All right, stage two, if you have oxygen present. So we just talked about if you don't have oxygen available, right, which is those times when your body is under a lot of strain or stress physically, right? It's physically demanding. You don't have oxygen available. But if you do, like right now, when you're listening right now, because I would hope that you're not sprinting or lifting weights while you're doing this, okay? So stage two, if you do have oxygen, like right now while you're taking your notes, is the Krebs cycle, okay? Oxygen is present. When oxygen is present, pyruvate enters the Krebs cycle. So those two, three carbon pyruvate molecules are going to go into the Krebs cycle. This is an aerobic process, aerobic. It requires oxygen, okay? So you need to know that for life in general, but also for your exam, right? Krebs cycle requires oxygen. You must have oxygen available in order for this to happen, okay? And the Krebs cycle produces some high energy electrons that are used in stage three of the respiration process. Okay, so the Krebs cycle, those pyruvate molecules are going to go into the mitochondria, they're going to go through the Krebs cycle with oxygen, and that's going to produce high energy electrons that we're going to use in stage three. Out of the Krebs cycle, you're going to get two ATP. Okay, so again, a little bit of energy happens at this stage, right? You're going to get two ATP and you're going to produce CO2. So again, Krebs cycle, those two pyruvate molecules are going to enter the Krebs cycle in mitochondria with combined with oxygen, right? It's going to give you high energy um, electrons that are going to go into the electron transport chain in stage three. You're going to get two ATP out of it. So that's a product, two ATP, and CO2 is produced, which is another product. Okay, the last stage, stage three or step three is the electron transport chain. Now, this is where you get the bulk of your energy molecules out of cellular respiration. Okay, so those high energy electrons from the Krebs cycle before, right, that you produced when you had those pyruvates and the oxygen together in the Krebs cycle. Okay, those high energy electrons work with a enzyme called or an enzyme called ATP synthase. Okay, so the process is they go to the electron transport chain. And there's these ATP synthase enzymes that those enzymes with your energy or high energy electrons help to make up to 34 ATP, a ton, a ton, a ton of energy molecules for your body and your cells to use, right? Again, this needs oxygen. You must have oxygen in order to go through the electron transport chain to get out all of those ATP. And at the end, you do end up creating also a little bit of water. Okay, so you are going to get, again, ATP out of the electron transport chain, and you're going to get water, okay, as 
you know, products or things that are created out of that. So this is going to show you a picture here. This is the electron transport chain on um, your mitochondria cellular respiration picture. This is kind of like making it larger for you to see. So this is your ETC. You have the high energy electrons, right? And then you have um, NADH getting transformed to NAD, FADH, FADH2 getting transformed to FAD. And that process continues on down this electron transport chain. So you're basically taking those high energy electrons and you're moving them from one spot to another down the line, down these ATP synthase enzymes. And that is going to cause you to make all of these ATP, right? Again, you need oxygen in order for this to happen and you're going to create some water, okay? So again, this is the electron transport system. Now would be a good time to please pause and either take a snippet, a screenshot, or go find yourself a picture of that. All right. And then here you have basically what happens in respiration when you are going into using oxygen. Okay, so this is a representation of what happens when you use oxygen, when you're going to go through the Krebs cycle and use electron carriers. This does, has everything blanked out for fermentation. So you have your two or your six carbon glucose gets cut in half um, to two three carbon pyruvates, right? In the process of glycolysis, you're going to get two ATP out. It's going to enter the mitochondria. You're also going to get out some CO2 at that point. It's going to go into the Krebs cycle with oxygen, and it's going to create those high energy electrons, okay, that are going to go into the ETC. And out of, sorry, out of the Krebs cycle, remember, also you get two ATP and some CO2, okay? And then once you have those high energy electrons from the Krebs cycle combined with oxygen, you get the ETC. ATC, you go through the electron transport chain, goes through all those ATP synthases, and you get out up to 34 ATP and some water. So your products, right, of um, cellular respiration are going to be that you're creating ATP, you get CO2 out, and you also get water out. So products are carbon dioxide and water, and you're going to create ATP. And what you need to start it, right, the reactants are glucose and oxygen. Okay, so you're going to take sugar and oxygen right out here. Okay, sugar and oxygen, you're going to put them into that mitochondria and out, you're going to get carbon dioxide and water as products, and you're going to create energy as ATP. Okay, so some similarities between photosynthesis and respiration. Okay, you've got a couple, both are related to energy, both use or organelles, and both use electron transport chains, right? So photosynthesis and respiration do have some things in common. Okay, and the differences are that they are complements to each other, right? Photosynthesis, we took plants take carbon dioxide, water, and then they use light energy, right, to take those things and they make sugar and oxygen, right? So plants take the CO2 and water combined with sunlight energy and they make their own food as sugar, glucose, and they create oxygen as a byproduct. Cellular respiration is the opposite, right? You're going to take that glucose and cut it up and use oxygen, right, with enzymes, and what you're going to get out is that carbon dioxide, water, and energy. And you can see that these are complements to each other, okay? So the products of photosynthesis come, and they are the reactants of cellular respiration, and the products of cellular respiration, aerobic, right, require action, so the products of cellular respiration are then the reactants of photosynthesis. It's a cycle. Plants make sugar and oxygen that we then take in, and then we use those to make carbon dioxide and water. And it's just a big cycle. Okay? So they are opposite of each other. Again, it might be a good idea to pause, take a snippet, or find both equations so that you know what they are, right? And you know how they are complementary, right? That photosynthesis and aerobic respiration are related to each other. This shows you a picture of cellular respiration and photosynthesis and how they are kind of related and how they are cycling through. So it might be a good idea again right now to pause, take a screenshot or a snippet or go find a um, cellular respiration photosynthesis cycle picture right now. All right, this is a good idea right now. So go ahead and process your notes. Go back in and highlight anything that you think is important. Write any 
questions or personal connections you have with the notes in the left column, so Cornell note style, um, or you could add comments if you want to do that instead of Cornell note style, that's fine too. Go ahead and add comments, any questions or personal connections using comments or a left hand side if you're making Cornell notes. And then um, write a three to five sentence summary of your notes once you are finished. All right, guys, that was a great time. I hope that you have gotten a lot out of this and I will see you next time.